Hi, I'm Brian Lane, Senior Product Manager of Imaging Software at Schneider Electric. What I'm going to show you in this video today is how to set up a stopped vehicle analytic. So what you need to do is get to the web GUI of the camera and once you're there, go to settings, find the event pull down and select analytic configuration. Now this is a thermal camera I'm going to assume at this point you've already selected a profile, you've set it up, and you've calibrated your scene. So once you've done that, click on the stopped vehicle behavior, click enable advanced options. Okay, so what this analytic basically is, it's similar to the abandoned object and loitering algorithm, but it's optimized for, for detecting a vehicle. Okay, the first thing you want to do um, with the algorithm is you're going to want to to, uh, to create a zone. So you'll either select a rectangle or a polygon. In this case, we're going to select a rectangle for a zone here right in front of the building we don't want people to stop in. So now that I've created my zone, I'm going to want to name that zone. Now you're going to want to name it something friendly because um, this algorithm will pop up for the analytic alarm and you want to want to know what it is. So I'm going to type in stopped vehicle okay you may want to create an exclusion zone as well if you click on the exclusion zone button you can exclude areas that you don't want any detection typically if it's going to overlap your scene for you for example that bush right there I don't want to be in the scene I don't want any of the leaves to trigger it so I'm going ahead and create an exclusion zone okay so I'm going to click on the stopped vehicle zone and the next thing I want to do is I want to adjust the sensitivity so this is the sensitivity of the whole scene it's set for a 3 as, as default now if you change this sensitivity setting it will override the sensitivity setting here under your profile settings okay only for this particular algorithm so if you have a different analytic behavior like object counting or loitering detection it's going to use the sensitivity from the profile setting so I'm just going to leave this at 3 now keep in mind you may need to change this if, if you're getting false alarms in your scene um, you may want to drop the sensitivity down if you're not getting the stop the vehicle detection to work as you want you may have to raise the sensitivity okay so coming down here where it says enabled alarm uh, this will generate an alarm that will be received by the head end you set up your head end to do whatever you want when it receives the alarm. For example, if it starts starts recording, it might want to uh, close a relay, uh, put a red box around a video window, or you can set it up as a source and handler to have the camera run some particular action. Okay, so I'm going to enable the alarm. Um, I have three or four choices here for alarm severity. The different levels of severity is how you is how you set up. Uh, the alarm to react at your head end. So for example, a uh, stopped vehicle may be a critical alarm, whereas an object counting alarm may be a minor alarm. And however you have your, your VMS set up is how it will react when it receives this particular alarm. So you have two settings here, dwell time and delay before the alarm. The dwell time setting, it defines the time in seconds that the alarm triggered zone turns to normal status. The delay before the alarm setting is how long a vehicle has been in the zone before it actually triggers an alarm. In this case, I want five seconds. So any car stop more than five seconds, I want to trigger the alarm. The next big piece that you want to make sure you get correct here is the set object size filters. So I'm going to click on that button here. And what this is showing you here, it's to tell the behavior what is the minimum and maximum size of the object. It is best to use you know, a car, for example, um, if you're going to be using stop vehicle detection. Um, you know, the, the perspective matters. So for example, if the object is this particular size, then you need to put it in perspective with the scene. This is a global setting, by the way. So. If I only want to detect uh, vehicles, um, this is the smallest vehicle size I would want to detect. So I will take this and make it approximately um, 
this big. Okay, so um, it's got to be at least this big so it won't detect humans walking through this particular zone. Okay, the maximum object size is the maximum size of what the car should be. So I'm going to take this here and I'm going to make this about the same size as the car I'm using here for calibration in this scene. Maybe a little bit bigger in case it's a truck. The one thing you want to make sure you remember is when you're all done setting up your, uh, your analytic is that you click on activate behavior, make sure that the profile is running, and then you want to save. Okay, now that it's saved, you're going to want to go over here to the live view. And on your live view page, you want to select right here where it says primary stream, hit select stream. And then you want to click on event stream. So hit select. Now, what's going to happen is anytime a car stops in that particular zone for five seconds, you're going to have an analytic alert. So if you look at your event stream on the live view, you'll see here the analytic alerts. And for stop vehicle, that's what we name the algorithm. And it shows you the actual detail. Front door profile triggered for stop vehicle. So once again, we named our profile front door, so we know that it was the front door. And we named our analytic stop vehicle, so then we know that that's exactly what the analytic was. And you'll see a list of all of the stop vehicle alerts or whatever analytic alerts you may have uh, set up within your, uh, your system. Thank you.